Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to another CentOS video. I love doing these. I love passing my knowledge on. And in this video, I'm continuing directly off the previous one, where I showed you guys the basics of SystemD, specifically SystemCTL, how to stop, start, and check the status of units, aka services, aka demons. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys journal CTL, which is also part of SystemD that allows you to view logging information for a SystemD unit. So let's go ahead and dive back into CentOS. All right, so as a quick recap from the previous video, we went over the system CTL command. We went over the basics, which I think is all that's necessary at this point. And one of the things that I showed you is that you can check the status of a unit, such as SSHD, by using system CTL, well, status. And on the bottom here, you actually see some logging information. Now again, that does depend on whether or not this information is considered protective. Some units will require you to use sudo even with status to view that information. And that's actually helpful because this information down here can help you troubleshoot a potential problem if you are having a problem with the unit. But we're not really seeing much information down here. That could be because there really isn't much information to show. But even if there was more information, you really wouldn't see that many lines here at the bottom. So systemd, since it does handle logging like I mentioned, gives us an entire command that is dedicated to logging, and that is journal CTL, just like that. Now I simply pressed enter with no options at all, and it's going to give me a ginormous amount of information. So if I was trying to find specific information about a unit, that would be really hard to do here because I've only had this machine up for probably, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes or something like that. And there's so much logging information here that it's just going to take forever. So what we can do is actually use journal CTL with the dash U option to narrow down the output to a unit that we really want to get information on. Now, again, we can run system CTL again with no options. And we can just scroll through here. We can see a long, huge list of all the units that are on our system. And I'm using, again, SSHD as an example. So we already know the name of a unit that we can use, or at least I do in my case. You can use whatever unit you'd like that was in the output. So what I could do is journal CTL-U for unit. And then I can type the name of the unit that I want to get more information on or view the logging information for. And we get that information here. Now there's not much here because again, this laptop hasn't been running for that long of a time. But you can see here that we are getting output specifically for that one unit rather than having to scroll through all the information that we saw when I used journal CTL with no options. Now I'm going to show you guys a trick here. I'm going to open a new tab. And what I'm going to do is show you guys another alternative to this. Now I try not to laugh because it is a little bit funny, but we have the journal CTL F option, which stands for follow. Now that's very similar to tail F. Now, why is that funny? Well, because to follow a specific unit, we do dash fu sshd. So journal ctl dash fu sshd. I know it, it's silly. That just sounds weird every time I say it. It's interesting, but you know, whatever. This is the command that you would use to follow a unit. So f for follow and u for unit. The unit we want to follow in this case is sshd. I'll press enter. And notice how it didn't return back to the command line. On this tab here, to the right, I'm going to run sudo systemctl restart. And I can't believe I forgot to show you guys that in the previous video, but I guess, you know, better late than never. 
And I'm going to restart the SSHD unit as you probably were able to guess. Put in my super secret password here. And then we could see that it followed the output. And I could just keep doing this. It's probably not a good idea to keep restarting a service like that. As you can see, it did actually fail. I made it fail because that's considered flapping when something restarts over and over again. And we can get some output here because again, we're following that unit. And we can see here that there is actually a colored warning here that I created myself. And I'm glad I did because when you're troubleshooting something, this is what it looks like. You follow the output for a unit, you troubleshoot the problem, try to reproduce it and fix it, and you'll be following the logs while you reproduce the problem. That's just the way troubleshooting works in Linux. And I'm glad I see an error here because it just makes it all that more realistic. We can see here that the reason why it failed is because it hit its start limit or whatever they call it right here, which basically means, well, it's flapping. So if I go back here, let's see if enough time has passed. I'm going to go ahead and start the service and let's see what happened. And it looks like it's working now. It was able to start the OpenSSH server, just as you see right here. So everything is back running again. That's great. Now there's of course some additional options with journal CTL that we can go ahead and use. So if I was to run simply journal CTL dash U SSHD, which we've already run, you can see now that we have quite a few lines. But if we wanted to show only a certain number of lines, like for example, maybe just five, we can use dash N, as you see right here, and a number to limit the output to just those lines. So if I press enter again, you can see, just as you would guess, we only see five lines of output. Now also, I could run journal CTL dash R to reverse the order of the lines that are going to be shown. And then I'll give it dash U and SSHD again. And that's going to go ahead and change the order. It's going to show the newest entries first because we can see that the time is actually descending right there on the left. So that could be a useful option for you if you want to show the newest entries first. Now, maybe we only want to see particular types of log entries when we view the output. So again, journal CTL dash U SSHD. But what I want to do instead is add dash P, which is basically short for priority. And I want to give it a particular priority level here when I go to execute this command. So what I can do is type ERR for error if I want to see just the actual errors. And we see just this one line because we did have that one error, the error that I caused. And I was able to do that again by adding dash P and then error or you know short for error to go ahead and show that on the screen. And of course we have others. We have, for example, info. And as you can see here, it's not really changing much at all, is it? But you know, if we wanted to narrow it down just to info, we could simply do that by typing info for the priority. We can type also warning to view only errors that are considered warnings. So not only do we see the error message, but we also see these two lines right here that are warnings that are telling us why it failed. So then you can glean that this is an error and these are warnings. So basically in a nutshell, any unit that you can check the status with or control via system CTL like SSHD is fair game to also be checked via journal CTL since they work basically hand in hand, as you can see here. And why do they work well together? Because, well, like I mentioned, journal CTL is part of systemd. So systemd is basically an all-in-one solution for not only managing your units or services, but also checking the log entry for those as well. So there you go. That was my quick video on journal CTL which again is very important. You want to make sure that you commit as many of the journal CTL commands to memory as you can, because logging is very important, especially when it comes to troubleshooting. Now in the next video, 
It all comes together because I'm going to be walking you guys through a fun activity and it's going to combine system CTL and journal CTL because I'm going to show you using both of those commands with a unit that is not SSHD this time. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel and you'll be the first to see notification of that video being available as soon as it is. And I will see you there as soon as I have it uploaded. Thanks for watching.